Hey guys, so someone wrote in and um, is asking me how to replace the hard drive on a 14 inch iBook. Um, now when I first read that email I thought well that shouldn't be too hard but I then got a couple more emails asking for the same thing and I thought oh well I guess people really do want to see how this is done. So 14 inch iBook and I was also told by the same person who originally asked that it would probably be like a six part video because it would take so long to do it. So I wanted to dispel some of those fears that it takes a long time to replace the hard drive in these guys. So first I remove the feet and I use my favorite o-ring remover from the last repair that I did. Now underneath the feet you'll find that there are some Phillips screws that we're just going to undo here. Normally there are also two screws in the battery bay. This machine's missing those. Uh, you'll notice, especially when working on older machines, sometimes they just don't have all the screws they should have in them. So now I'm going to take my T8 and remove the three larger screws on the bottom case. Take a nylon probe tool here and this is the part that a lot of people get hung up on. So to remove the bottom case, it's not really that difficult, but it does take a little bit of force and it makes noises that you're not that used to hearing when you take apart a computer. Um, the deal is that there are actually clips holding the bottom case to the top case here, so you have to release those clips and it makes a little bit of a cracking sound here. One thing to note, the darker gray of the top case is a lot more malleable than the hard polybicarbonate of the bottom case. So if you're going to put any sort of pressure on anything, it should be on this gray plastic right here because that's a lot less likely to break on you. So then around the optical drive, I slide my black stick in and just slide it across, releases those clips, again makes that awesome noise. Put my black stick underneath the battery bay and swing it around. Now there's one interesting thing in the battery bay of the iBooks. Um, there is a little latch here, so I just release that again with my O-ring tool. And now that that one side's released, I want to go back here and I want to release the other side. So same deal, starting from that rear clutch with my black stick over the I.O. bezel. And then just along the front of the machine. So a lot of nasty noises, but if you notice, no broken clips. It holds its form pretty well. Now one of the things that makes the iBook G4 different than the, um, sorry, the 14 inch iBook G4 different than the 12 inch is that to remove the top case, you actually do need to remove the bottom shield. So there are a series of screws and it's one of those what you see is what you get. If you see a screw on the bottom shield, you want to remove it. There are three different size screws. There's a long screw that goes up in this corner. There are three medium screws that go right here. So there's one guy here. And then there are one, two, three, four, five, six of these little two by three screws. So we're going to remove all of those. And, oh, and here we find something interesting. So remember before I said that the two screws in the battery, they were missing from the bottom case. It looks like this machine had a repair once before, and the technician who did the repair incorrectly used these on the bottom shielding. Nice thing about this is we're going to have a chance to put it back correctly. Never bad to correct other people's mistakes there. So great, so the bottom shield comes off. Now, let's go for the three small screws in the battery bed. And we've got one long screw up here by the DC inboard. That's the part where you plug your AC adapter in. 
and three um, medium length screws in the optical drive. Again, since this machine's obviously been taken apart before, not in the best fashion, we're missing two of the three screws right here. So I'm just going to take the one out here and we'll see if they even use the right screw on this guy. They did. Let me see if I can show you this because for whatever reason I really like this screw. Um, <laughs> it's a little beveled at the bottom, so slightly different than most of the screws in this machine. The reason you had to take that bottom shield off is there are four long screws um, around here that do need to be removed. So one was right up here on the bottom frame. My second one is going to be right next to the fan on the logic board. The third one is going to be up on the bottom frame around where the sleep light is. And then the fourth is actually a slightly shorter screw. And that's going to be right in that left front corner of the machine. Um, so if you can probably can't see it because I'm recording on an eyesight, but it is a slightly smaller screw than the other three that I just removed. So that's all the screws that you need to remove from the bottom. So we're going to turn this guy over. And any of you guys who have needed to get the serial number off of your iBook before may have done it this way where you remove the keyboard. Two little tabs on the top of the keyboard, remove the keyboard, release it very, very easily. There's an Airport Extreme card in this iBook because it was one of the original models. So I released the clip for the Airport Extreme and then I released the antenna. Now there's a pull tab on the Airport Extreme itself. So I just gently pull that out and there we go. Four screws for the RAM shield. Awesome. And we remove the RAM shield and just carefully navigate the antenna out. Keyboard lifts up from a flex connector, just pull straight up on it. And then three screws hold the top case on. So the thing that you're probably already noticing is that the iBook, um, the 14-inch the iBook, you do have to remove a lot of screws from it. And that's really the only hard part from this. So now I'm going to remove the top case. I remove it from the left corner first. There are no barriers in the way there. And then I remove it from the front. And this one's sticking to the top shield just a little bit. So I want to make sure that this top shield is staying down. Um, I'm going to flip the machine up and release the clips on the underside of the top case over by the battery bay. And now here's the part that you want to be looking out for. So you don't want to go all He-Man on that because we've got this really delicate DC inboard here. Anyone who's tripped over their power cord and paid to get it replaced know that these guys break pretty easily. So the last thing I want to do is put stress on this. So now that I have it released on all three corners, I'm just going to gently move it towards the right to get around the DC inboard, and then I just lifted it up. You never want to put pressure or strain on the DC inboard itself.